Are, are we doing an intro or anything like that? This is the disgruntled crab and rusty culture most professional review show here we are again for a most professional review and we're actually doing a new segment on this after one of our christmas episodes of looking at the tick kind of got the idea in our heads to try looking at a pilot versus pilot so in this episode, we're going to be looking at the first episode of the animated Tick from the 90s and the Amazon live action show, The Tick. I'm kind of interested to hear what your thoughts. So I'll let you start us off. Basically, which, which one did you like better? Well, I liked the animated one better, it, it, very simply. And I kind of want to dive into that first, if that works for you. That works for me. I'm again. I'm looking at it from rose-colored glasses. I really like the animated, so the live action would have had to be leagues above it for it to step up. But I preferred the animated one as well. So if you listen to our Christmas stuff, you and, and watch specifically our our Christmas the Tick Love Santa review, you would have heard that I didn't love it. I w- I was I didn't hate it, but I was I was just pretty much right down the middle on it. Right down right on the fence. And I think a lot of it was I really didn't, I was kind of just thrust into a world that I didn't really get the jokes. I didn't get it because I didn't get what the world was supposed to be. And then watching the pilot of this show, it really set up what the world was supposed to be in a better way. And it's like, it's not necessarily an origin story and that's not what I needed, but it is an introduction into this world, into the type of comedy they're going for, into the sarcasticness of it. It did that job of putting me in the mindset I was supposed to be in. I think that was a big issue. I think now if I were to go back and watch that Tick Love Santa episode, I I know what I'm in for now. I I know what the world is. I think I would get the jokes more. I really liked it. I I really enjoyed this. Going back, it really sets up the entire world. There are so many superheroes that are just one-off throwaway jokes in the entire episode the city which is the name of the city that the tick is in charge of protecting which was hilarious it it has so many superheroes and i was always thinking that kind of the show was set up this was the the grounds where they just threw the superheroes they didn't want to deal with because most of the superheroes that are in the city are almost useless in all of their things. Come on, man. The human bullet's pretty good. The human bullet is a running joke through the show, and every time he's in it, it is always entertaining. He's one of the few that were introduced in the episode that makes recurring comebacks throughout the show, and every time, it is always entertaining. With his catchphrase, Fire me, boy! He hops into his large cannon, and his son fires him off towards the danger. But yeah, this world that is set up is really, you know, I think unlike anything that I've seen, at least in the superhero genre. We get the the anti-heroes so much now, and I'm so sick of it. And this is just such a, 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 a breath of fresh air, where it's just a hero who is just so over-the-top tropey. And what is he? He's just indestructible. That's just what he is. And it, it's unapologetic about that, and I really like that, this idea of this world where superheroes are just a regular thing to the point where you just have these mundane silly ones like the chameleon what was it the chameleon man or something like that where all he does is he's just jumping between objects and he's changing colors or i really really enjoyed the joke of the superman-esque type character where he's constantly trying to find somewhere where he can change into his superhero suit and that was just hilarious it's the jokes in this land really well and one of my favorite lines in it is something. It was something along the lines of, "Oh, gravity, she's a she's, she's a foul a, mistress." Or something gravity, like she's a harsh mistress. A harsh mistress. <laughs> that's what it was. And double flip. Aha! I'll 
bounce off that flagpole and flip to safety. Aha! I'll bounce off that broad, flat surface. I don't eat out and reverse my underwear to get an extra day. Or maybe not. Gravity is a harsh mistress. Looking back on, on the cartoon, I think it freed them up that they didn't need to search for an actor that was large enough to be this over-the-top superhero. So they just had to concentrate on the voice. Because looking at it, the voice of the tick, he seems natural, even though it's obviously over the top. It doesn't sound like he's reaching for it. It sounds like that's just this character's natural voice. So when he's delivering these absurd, almost cliched, but they're so creative that it and, and over the top that it's endearing. So it, it it gives you a warm feeling about it because this is a hero that he believes in justice and that it is his destiny to go and fight evildoers and stop them in every everywhere he encounters them. I also really like the flip of the the bad guys were called the the idea men or something like that. Yes. And it turns out that their big idea at the end was just to to steal <laughs> stuff. Yes. And that was such a hilarious a hilarious twist. Uh, it, you can barely even call it a twist, but I think that's why it's done so well. It fits so well into the the world and the theme that this is going for. That these guys that everyone there even the reporter is talking about, they're practicing for a bigger heist. No, it's literally just they're they're putting a bomb in a dam and they're saying give us money. And that's hilarious. That is so funny that you you're building up these guys like they have this great grand plan and then nope, they're really just they're just guys. Okay, idea man, what's the big idea? Well, we thought we'd steal a lot of money, and then we'd be rich, and we wouldn't have to work anymore. You can't! Looking back on the episode, it introduced the two main characters and the entire city, and gave you a villain and a story in it in less than 20 minutes, which is a lot of heavy lifting that has to get done, and it does it. I can't really think of a spot in it that... It doesn't work. It's just everything is, is clicking the entire way through. Well, I remember watching through it and thinking, okay, the end's got to be coming soon because so many things were happening. And I think I even paused it at one point and I was only halfway through and I was like, holy cow. <laughs> and I'm, not, I'm saying that in a good way. Like they've managed to deliver information so efficiently that I've, I've, I've absorbed and retained so much information in just this such a short amount of time. Yeah, we, we get right into it. The Tick is introduced. Arthur is introduced in probably the most hilarious fashion. He's just working his job as an accountant in his moth costume. That was another great joke. There, you, there's just too much individuality. It's freaking everyone else out. <laughs> I'm fired? Is there a problem with my work? Oh, no, Arthur. No, it's, 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 it's that stupid bunny outfit. Oh, no, not bunny, sir. Moth. <laughs> it's my moth suit. Actually, it's a flying suit. The wings are in my briefcase. I think my other favorite part is when the tick is trying to convince Arthur to fly for the first time. And just the utter, almost innocence and naivete that this is going to work out. I've, I've never done this before. It's, it's all right. But, I, but I've never actually flown. No, not a problem. <laughs> <laughs> Get those wings on, Arthur. Uh, this isn't such a good idea. The wings, put them on. I'm not so good at this. You'll get better. I've never flown before. Not a problem. No, 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 no. Change my mind, wanna come down. It's your destiny, Arthur. Hug it! <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm glad to hear that you enjoyed it, because I was, I was intrigued after watching the pilot of the Amazon series, and then looking at the cartoon again. I was intrigued to see what what your opinion of each was about. Yeah, let, let's dive into the live one. and I'll try and kind of talk about it exclusively like I did with uh, the animated one first. I will prop... Let, let me touch one thing, because there's one scene in particular that's in both pilots. There's the 
apartment introduction scene. Yep. Where Arthur takes the tick to his apartment and it's I think it works so much better in the animated one because you've really got a feeling that the tick is looking for this superhero hideout. He's going around trying to find the secret switch that's going to turn all flip all the furniture over and there's going to be the gadgets and stuff to hunt down evildoers and all this stuff and he's breaking things around Arthur's apartment and again they keep it so tight in the animation they don't spread that out and they don't separate it into different segments so you don't lose track of what's going on and we'll touch the same thing in, in the live action one but I've that's one of my favorite scenes when he's breaking stuff in Arthur's apartment yeah. what's, your, what's your couch turned into some secret crime fighting computer he's like no it turns into a bed <laughs> so on the live action one I didn't hate it I think I'm lukewarm on it. I want to say that I I think the guy who is playing the Tick does a pretty good job. And I think my issues with him, with, with with his role, are not necessarily with him, but it's just a limitation on the medium, which is which is live action, in that you touched on it a little bit, and one of the things that makes like the Tick in my opinion, in that first episode that makes him feel larger than life is his largeness. And this guy is just, he's a guy. He's not even, you know, like an excessively tall guy. And he's in an obviously padded out suit. And it just doesn't work. There's the scene where he is walking and those all the guys are shooting at him. He's just kind of laughing as he walks through it. It doesn't work because you can't be cartoony with it because it's not a cartoon. And the moments when he does do something cartoony, such as flicking someone and they go flying, it just looks weird because it's very obviously CGI. And that takes you out of it. It takes you out of that moment that it wouldn't take you out of it in the animation because the whole thing is like that rather than just these moments interspersed with a guy walking down a corridor and laughing sometimes. What I liked about the guy doing it is I think he nails the voice. I really think he does that well. But unfortunately that feels out of place because of the other elements I just talked about, about how the individual, his, 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 phys- his physique does not feel larger than life in the same way that his voice does, in the same way that his voice acting does. So it just kind of feels weird. They don't mesh together. The other thing I didn't like about this was this idea of Arthur's mental illness. And sure, a, a mental illness plotline can be compelling in things, but I don't want it in this this isn't this isn't what i was looking for i was looking for something along the lines of the cartoon where it's it's upbeat it's crazy it's zany and this isn't that but at the same time it's trying to be whenever the tick is on screen so we end up with these two different things and maybe maybe i should give the show a chance because maybe it builds on this later but we end up with these two different shows that whenever it's just arthur it's this drama about him battling a mental illness and when it's the tick it's trying to be the cartoon and failing to do so. So it, it it's just really weird. And when you bring the two together, it just doesn't work because it's making the ticks failure at larger than life even more obvious than it already was. And it's making Arthur's character feel even more boring than he already was. There's my thoughts. I would say I'm pretty close to the same camp because... The opening music in the uh, live action one is fairly upbeat, kind of like the animated one. Uh, The animated one, that's stuck in my head forever. I can basically sing that entire tune because I've heard it so many times and it's a catchy ditty. And the opening theme for the Tick live action one is very upbeat. So you think you're getting this upbeat thing. And it, I think it does suffer from tonal whiplash because... Even the parts where they're doing the really dark stuff, like with Arthur and his backstory, there are some weird jokes thrown in there that are supposed to be comedy in this really dark segment. His father is killed when the superhero's spaceship lands on his car, and then they get out, and they're suffering from a weaponized form of syphilis. I'm like, what what turn did we come through that we have weaponized syphilis in this show? And then the main right. villain, the terror, steals Arthur's ice cream and eats it in front of him. They just he just viciously shot all these superheroes and now he's stealing ice cream from a little boy. 
it was one of those really weird shifts. Like, we really need to make sure that everybody knows this guy's the bad guy, that he's stealing ice cream from a little kid. Yeah, 100% agree. Now, what I will say is, I could see this getting better. A lot of times when you watch, when we've watched stuff like this, you're like, this is a train wreck. And, and maybe you were, but for me, I could see this finding itself. I kind of see this as a, as a little bit, maybe some of these things are going to be tied together. Now, it doesn't make up for the things that I didn't like in this. I could just see the improvements being made. Do I ever think it's going to be great and something I would invest a lot of time into? No, I don't think it'll ever get there. But I could see the improvements being made. I was intrigued, and I kind of wanted to watch the next episode, but I was trying to make sure that we had this clean break, that we're... We're doing a study of just the pilot versus the pilot. Right. And looking at it, I kind of really miss episodic shows where there doesn't need to be a long running story arc through the entire thing. And you need to watch every episode because that's all we're getting now is there's 13 episodes of a story arc going through and you have to watch every episode and you have to cram it all in. Otherwise, you'll get left behind and won't be able to talk about it with people at work because they'll get ahead of you. Because that was one of the other problems I had with it is it's about another 10 minutes longer than the animated one. And it feels like we don't even get halfway through where the animated one did. That's kind of the worst thing about this new style that you just described of shows is a lot of times they feel like they'll never end. Like, they're just writing them to keep them going and going and going. And, like, look at, like, The Walking Dead is a great example of that, where they just kept dragging it out and dragging it out and keeping it going. Eventually, you lose interest because, like, nothing's ever going to actually happen. There's never going to be a conclusion to this story. Now, some some shows have remedied that by limiting them, becoming limited series where they're only, like, eight episodes long and stuff like that. But it's still really nice to be able to sit down sometimes and not have to worry if I've seen the last episode and not worry about retaining the information for the next one and just be able to shut my brain off and just watch something. And you're right, that's gone. There, There's nothing made, or at the very least, there's not much made for adults like that anymore. You used to have stuff, you know, like The Simpsons, which has fallen off, or like Futurama, or Family Guy, stuff like that. But it, it's... A lot of that has fallen off now because it's it's been going on for too long. Yeah, and there's nothing that's been replacing those old guards with new shows. It seems like a lot of them have dropped off to either due to lack of writing because most of the new stuff, a lot of new stuff is just garbage. And it's hard to watch because nothing makes sense from a writing standpoint. And it gets frustrating because you just look at it and, you, you poke one little hole and the entire thing of dominoes just comes crashing down. So, yes, I, I watched the the live action one and I'm intrigued. I, I didn't hate it. It doesn't seem like it is a cash grab. It seems like somebody cares about the, the project, but it doesn't seem like they quite understand it. Or at the very least, I, I don't think they understand how to translate it. I, that might be part of it. Looking at the Tick's costume, it doesn't look right. <laughs> it, it looked like he basically had a blue plastic garbage bag slapped on him the first time he shows up because he shows up in broad daylight. So all of the imperfections just stand out. I don't I, know how you do it, though. I don't either. It, That's one thing, just looking at it. I don't know how you could do it in a, in a live action thing without having it look utterly ridiculous. But I think then if you're going to do that, you need to lean into that. I, I think that's probably the the Patrick Warburton live action one that came out late 90s, early 2000s. It looked really close to the Tick costume where there was no none of the, the ridges and stuff to hide the imperfections of the suit. It was It looked really uncomfortable for him. He wasn't able to move at all, but it was basically a large bodysuit. That looked almost like the, the, the Tick's outfit. And I think that's kind of the problem is there's a lot of the Tick cartoon and coming from the, the comic, the Tick, that it just doesn't really translate well to a live action show. There was one point where 
the tick is fighting those bad guys and there's the giant explosion. He says, go tell it on the mountain. I'm like, that is a direct line from the tick Christmas episode because he was doing Christmas lyrics when he's fighting Santa. That doesn't quite work in that, in just the first episode. I, I just felt there was lines that I picked up on because I'd watched the animated show so much that they were trying to put some of the, the tick isms into the show, but they felt out of place. And I think it's that the, the fact where he's not cartoony enough, he's not large enough to stand out from the rest of the cast. I was, I was trying to think of how do you fix this? And I was, the only way I can really think of is that you actually make him a CGI character. And then you're just worrying about the voice, but that's going to cost way too much money for a television show. Yeah. And to not make it just freaky to look at. <laughs> yes. It takes a lot of work to make a realistic person in there, but then you have the other thing where he, he looks like a guy in a weird suit that's doing extremely strong stuff that we're losing all of the emphasis on nothing feels real because the effort he's putting in is he's just smacking people and they're flying far away and it just doesn't look right because it's not it's not following any type of laws of physics so it just looks odd i think that animation and live action are just two fundamentally different mediums and things that work in animation a lot of times won't work in live action and vice versa this is a thing that works really well as a cartoon as an animation and Maybe it's all right to say that that's all it should be. <laughs> and, and maybe we should do more of that. You know, like we don't need CGI lions. The The cartoon ones were good enough. Talking about Lion King. I kind of figured you were talking about Lion King. I've, it, I've avoided any of the live, the, hold on, live action with huge right. quotation marks. Because when you're using CGI, it's not live action. Right. So it's some. It's okay. It's okay to just have animated things. It's okay to just have live action things. Not everything has to cross. Is it that crazy to ask for new ideas every once in a while? Yes. <laughs> because if we have a new idea, we don't have a built in audience. And then we have to, to build up on our own merits. So we actually have to work hard to have good writing and well written characters. If we have a property, we could just plug it in and say, hey, you like this thing, right? Here's the new thing. Just look at it. Watch it. So yeah, that's my, my hot take. Animation should stay animated. <laughs> live action should stay live action. And never the two shall cross, except unless it's Who Framed Roger Rabbit. That was where I was curious. When we were talking about the Tick Christmas episode, this had to be popular enough because there have been two live action shows made of this cartoon and comic book series. So there's enough recognition that justified that. So why isn't the animation more prevalent through pop culture? Because it was What just, year did it come out? Uh, I believe it was 94 to 96. I wonder if it just missed it. It just missed the this this new age of it that oh. might be the case because it was before DVDs had really hit off. So everything was still VHS at that time. And VHSs were ridiculously expensive and you couldn't put that much on them. So most of the time when you were looking at stuff, it was three to four episodes of a show for twenty to thirty dollars. Which even looking at it today, you can get a whole series for 20 to 30 dollars all the episodes in one dvd collection i bet that's what it was i bet it just missed it because it has all the makings of a, of a popular culture quotable thing of things that people would be throwing out references to left and right that we quote all the time now i i bet it just missed it because spongebob barely made it yeah that might be the case i was just curious because there's quite a few of those shows from that time frame that were really good and they've dropped off and you can't find them anywhere. They're not available. You find bootleg copies on YouTube with that are horrible condition because they were recorded on someone's VHS and that's all that's available. There's not a high, 
high definition version out there to watch. Yeah. So I guess my final thoughts are the tick animation pilot. Very good. It sets the scene for everything else. If you were like me and you had issues with the Christmas special, I think this resolves a lot of them. I'm going to have to go back and rewatch the Christmas special and see if my mind has changed. I imagine it has. And the live action one is, I agree, not a cash grab. Somebody's trying. It's just, just because you try doesn't mean you succeed. <laughs> and I think that's the case here is there's obviously effort there. Someone cares about it, but it's just not there for me. So I just want to thank everybody for, for tuning into this. And I have to put in a little plug here at the end because I am the host of another show. It's actually a podcast called Full of Shit, and you can find it on Spotify. Just type in Full of Shit, the, th- the three words. And it's basically just a wacky show where we just discuss just about anything. And that, that typically comes out on Fridays. And also you will find you can find the link in the description of this video. You can join us again. We'll be releasing one every week. So if you enjoyed this, come back, recommend it to somebody, check out Full of Shit on Spotify, and we'll catch you next time. One of the things we say on Full of, the Sh- Full of Shit all the time is if you really want to help the show, take one of your friend's phones and then subscribe to this channel forcibly without them knowing. <laughs> and then maybe one day they will stumble across it and they'll watch it and you've you've planted the seeds. You've indoctrinated another fan. Perfect. <laughs>